Hello friends, we will be discussing the concept of the assumptions of law of variable proportion. Now, when we speak about law of variable proportions, we know that we are talking or rather we will be discussing about one thing being variable and the other thing being constant or rather one of the input factors being variable and the other input factors are constant here. Now, there are certain assumptions that we will be discussing. Every law that we have understood so far, we have always figured out there are certain assumptions that we take into consideration. On the basis of those assumptions, these laws have been derived and we measure the specifications that we require for. So basically, if we have law of demand, it is law of returns or probably law of diminishing returns, whatever it may be. Everything has certain assumptions. That is the basis of it. Now, what assumptions do law of variable proportions have? Let us understand that first. Now, the law of variable proportion is valid under the following assumptions. Now, as you can see, the line states that it is valid. If at all these assumptions are not there, we cannot call this law of variable proportion to be valid. So what exactly is required to make this law of proportion valid is something that we'll be understanding right now. Let's figure out what do we have in here. It is assumed that the state of technology remains unchanged. We assume that the technological state, that means if we are using or probably let's take an example. Earlier, if you never had a touchscreen phone, we are assuming or rather if this law was derived back then, we would assume that this technology will never change. This technology is going to remain the same. This is the first assumption here. That means we assume that there will be no technological advancement. There will be no state of change technology that will be going through here. If there is an improvement in the technology due to inventions, the average and the marginal product may increase instead of decreasing. Now, for example, if there is any advancement, if there is any change in the technological center due to the inventions or rather due to the recent development in science and technology that we have. So, if there are numerous inventions, the marginal product demand or rather the demand or satisfaction of that product will keep on increasing because you'll have something new. Hence, if there is something new, you will will to or rather you will have that willingness to spend one more unit or rather to spend for one more unit. That means in this instance, the marginal satisfaction of any product that you buy, whatever you have already. For example, if you have a four wheeler car with you. Now, if you get technological advancement, whatever features you don't have in your car right now and if a new car is bringing that same thing that new advanced technology so will you be not willing to buy that new car or will you be still stuck to the same car no matter how much ever kilometers you have run that car or how many years you must have spent that car at certain point you will have that willingness hence instead of decreasing marginal utility in this specific example you will see an increasing marginal demand for that specific product the satisfaction level will keep on increasing because now when you buy that new car you will have more of technology or rather you'll have more of comfort which you never had in your earlier car so with this example the assumption states that there will be no technological advancement. Hence, whenever we say that there is no technological advancement here, we assume that this thing is going to remain the same. Hence, instead of increasing marginal utility, the marginal utility keeps on decreasing. And hence, this is the assumption that we have been discussing about. Now, it is also assumed that there are some variables whereby the quantity is fixed and some are variable. Now, what does this line state? This line states that we assume that there are certain input factors which will remain constant no matter what, no matter whatever the situation is, these factors will remain constant whereas other factors will remain variable. So if there is a group of variable and constant, let me just draw it for you. Now, supposingly V stands for variable and C stands for constant. Now there will be or rather there will be certain input factors. Now all this thing relates to input factors here. Now if we see we place one two and three these three factors in the form of variable this will constantly keep on changing you will always see certain variations in them but there are another factors that is four five and six which will always be in this constant group itself no matter whatever happens so there is a favoritism concept basically if you remember if at all when you when whenever you used to go for schools or colleges the teachers used to have certain favorite students now 
no matter how much ever brief or rather how much ever study you do if you're not in that group you might not have that kind of favoritism concept beloved upon you or rather bestowed upon you why is that because teachers have these students only in that group if you want to be a part of that group you need to do something extra or probably you need to do something good this happens in office politics as well the same thing if you apply in economics here in this concept there are certain factors that will remain a part of constant group and they will never change from constant to variable just like your friends so there are certain friends probably if you have a lot of friends out of those lot of friends you will have certain group or rather you'll have some selected hand-picked friends who are your constant friends whereby you will be loving to hang out with these guys as compared to any other friends that you have now why is that is because you have spent that much of time with them and hence you have that constant feeling with them but it is not the same thing in economics there are certain input factors which will be just placed into constant group this example was given just to make sure that how exactly constant and variable is derived here so in variable groups or rather there are certain input factors which are a part of variable and there are certain which are a part of constant this groupism will exist and this is the base of the assumption here this is one of the ways by which we can alter the composition of the factors and know its effect on output. Now, whatever factors we have mentioned here, let's see if 1, 2 and 3 are here. Let me see if, if this 1 goes in here and if this 4 comes in here. Now, the change that will happen. So, what will the effect on the output be? If the inputs are changed here, 1 which was a variable constant or rather variable factor if it goes into the constant group and 4 which was a constant factor goes into the variable group what exactly will be the effect here the effect will change will the effect be the same or will there be any negligible or a little small slight change that we can talk about this thing is something that we need to assume or rather this thing is something that we need to look after so these are basic experiments that we do by changing this or altering the composition of these variables and constants so this is what you need to assume here or this is what you need to figure out after assuming all these variable and constant factors. Now, this law does not apply when all the factors are variable. Law of variable proportion will never work if you put all these factors under one group which is variable group. So, if you put all these factors under variable group itself, law of variable proportion will never work. There has to be certain constant factors. Hence, the statement says that one thing being variable and everything other being fixed, every other thing being fixed. Why that line is mentioned is because you need to have or rather this law of variable proportion demands for certain factors to be constant. Hence, if you put all these factors under one group, it is never going to work. Make sure you understand this concept very well. Now, all units of variable factors are homogeneous. The word homogeneous states about similar, somewhat of same kind or rather similar concepts here. Now, all these factors which are a part of variable group are homogeneous in nature. As I have mentioned, all the units of variable factors. So, whatever part you place or rather whatever factors you place under variable group like this 1, 2 and 3. These are homogeneous in nature. These are somewhat similar. So, basically you can call them as or rather these are like triplets or probably twins which have like similar characteristics. Hence, you place them under variable. So, probably if one of these changes, the other can cope up for it. Hence, these things are placed or rather these things are assumed to be homogeneous here. Now, the next line states, the law of variable proportion explains the relationship between factors proportion of fixed and variable input on the one hand and the output on the other hand. Now, this law of variable proportion explains what? It explains the relationship between factors of proportion or rather factors proportion of fixed or rather the one those are constant here and the variable inputs in one hand and the output on the other hand. So, basically now we will divide it into two groups inputs and the next one will be outputs. So, basically what happens is that whatever factors you have here, if these factors are fixed and variable because inputs are basically classified into two parts, variable and constant or rather fixed and constant or rather fixed and variable itself. We can call it either variable and constant or fixed and variable whatever you want to. Now, inputs are classified into variable and constant. With this, 
factors being into question what is the effect on output is something that we need to check with all these things so supposingly here in the first experiment we kept one as variable and the other two three four as fixed here what is the effect is something that we'll be checking on the output for the next example if we keep like two as constant or rather two as variable what happens to one three and four or rather if the composition is taken as one three and four and two is variable what happens to the output so every composition if you change if you alter them how exactly the effect on output looks like is specifically known as law of variable proportion here alternatively it refers to the input output relation so basically it speaks about input and output relation here so whatever input you have whatever output you are giving you understand the basics or rather details of this with the input and output relation when output is increased by varying the quantity of one input when output now when we're talking about inputs and outputs we have v and c so you have your output here this is your input here now let's talk about when input and output is supposed to be considered my first group states that 1 is variable, 2, 3 is constant. With this, my output is giving me 10% increase. Let's say in the next experiment, I keep 2 as variable and 1 and 3 as constant here. Now, this is giving me 20% increase. Now, in the third factor, I keep 3 as variable and 1 and 2 as constant. Now, these are the inputs that we're talking about with this i'm getting 35 percent increase in the output so basically which is the one that i'll be selecting i'll be selecting the third one third option now why is that because with this ratio or rather with this combination i get 35 percent increase in the output that i'm doing on the daily basis so earlier if i used to do 70 percent output with one of the combinations now changing that combination i am getting 35 percent additional over that 70 percent so it will be total of 105% output that I'll be getting. Hence, I'll be selecting that option. Now, if I'm already at 90% and I'm getting 35% additional, that is a win-win situation for me because I'm earning a lot more as I could or rather I could have earlier rather than that I'm earning it right now. Hence, this scenario works in a better way. As quantity of variable factors or rather increases, the quantity of fixed factors remains constant. Normally, the marginal product and the average product of the variable factor will increase up to a point. Here, we are also speaking about the quantity of variable factors. Now, everything being fixed, you have constant factors which are fixed in nature. That means the quantity that will be putting into fixed factors or constant factors, those will remain the same. For example, in this, here if you used to put like 50,000 into each factor, now this will remain the same in 1 and 2. But when it comes to variable factor, it might be 25,000, it might be 30,000, it might keep on changing as and as and how I require it to be. So as per my requirement, it will keep on changing. To understand that thing, every variable factor will keep on increasing up to a point. It won't go beyond a specified limit. Why is because it will backfire us with the costing ratio here. That we'll understand when we go under the concept of margin and costing. Hence, right now we'll be discussing only about production. Hence, when we're talking about this specific thing, we understand that, okay, this ratio or this factor is being constant here and how I exactly it is being constant because there is a fixed amount that you have to put in. Now, variable, it can keep on increasing up to a certain point. With this, the assumptions also speak that variables will keep on increasing. It is up to me or rather up to the producer how exactly I want the variable factors to keep on increasing or rather I don't want them to be increased at all. This is what my lookout will be. Now, thereafter, marginal production will start falling. Declining the marginal product will pull down the average product. Now, those variable factors that we're talking about, it will reach unto a certain point. As I said that if it goes beyond that limit, it will backfire us or rather it will backfire at us. It will come and bite us. But what happens to that thing when it comes to economic terms so if it goes beyond the specified limit the marginal or the average product utilization or the satisfaction against or rather in favor of that specific product what we used to have earlier it will keep going down hence you need to set a specific limit as to whereby you need to put a stand or rather whereby you need to put a stop in 
putting more of variable factors there and only then you will be able to reach the equilibrium point whereby you are attaining maximum satisfaction related to that specific product. This is what you need to understand. Now, the next details refers to the composition of it. As the composition between variable factor and fixed factor changes, resultant change in output occurs in varying proportions. Again, let us draw that same thing. Let us pull it out like this variable and constant and this is output now if i'm talking about variable factors 1 2 and 3 are constant here i'm getting 10 percent increase with every increase or rather every change in the variable and constant factors i'll be getting like 10 percent decrease here with this factor 3 1 and 2 so basically with all these combinations that i'm talking about there is certain increase or decrease in the resultant output so the resultant output may change in varying proportions here it is getting up by 10 percent here it is getting down by 10 percent it depends on how exactly the product functions how exactly the demand for the product is and how exactly the costing of the product is happening so you need to understand this using this specific logic here now the behavior of output with varying compositions of fixed and variable factors can be divided into three distinct stages of production and returns of factor now the behavior of this specific or rather behavior of inputs basically that we are talking about it can be or rather the behavior of this output this output that we are talking about it will depend on the kind of constant and variable proportion that we keep so the proportion between variable and constant will directly affect the output here so if this is a favorable composition that we have, output will definitely give you a positive response. If this is a non-favorable composition that we keep, out will never give you a positive response. It will give you a negative response there. Hence, the behavior of this output with the varying compositions of fixed and variable factors that we have can be divided into three distinct production stages. Now, this composition can be divided into three stages. Now, what are those three stages of production is something that we are going to learn. Now that we have understood that these are the things that we need to understand when it comes to assumptions of law. Now these three stages of production will be explaining them in the next video whereby we will be discussing how exactly the production function works, how exactly what are those stages, what are those three stages or rather what are those three distinct stages that we'll be discussing but that will be a new concept altogether hence we'll be not discussing right now in this video but we would like to let you know that variable and constant factors the composition of these things and the effect on the output can be discussed in three stages so this is all that we have to discuss when it comes to assumptions of the law of variable proportion so by far whatever assumptions we have had right now make sure you understand them and you fix them in your mind in a better way using all realistic approach that you can have so basically you can talk about all the realistic uh, concepts or rather all the realistic examples that you can put into logic that will help you in a better understanding part of economics when it comes to all theoretical language which is a little boring for you to understand hence make sure you use a lot of real life aspect or rather real life approach here to understand all these details here so this is all for the video thank you